In this video, I'm going to show you how you can charge a non-Tesla electric car using a Tesla charger, because behind me we have a Nissan Leaf and a Hyundai Kona EV. And the most important thing about these cars is that one's a Nissan and one's a Hyundai, and neither of them are a Tesla. And we're gonna go make them charge using Tesla stuff. So here is a dilemma. You just bought a car like a Nissan Leaf. You're really excited about it. You come to your favorite restaurant or brewery, such as Avery Brewing here in Gun Barrel, Colorado, and then you go to plug it in at one of these Tesla chargers, and you quickly find an issue because this connector won't fit in your Nissan Leaf, but there's a solution. Now, the reason that that Tesla plug won't fit in the Nissan Leaf is because Teslas use their own proprietary connector and non-Teslas use a standard here in the United States called J1772. Now, usually you'd be pretty much out of luck unless you had one of these. Now, this video is brought to you by our friends over at Lectron and they build something really cool I think not a lot of people know about, the Tesla to J1772 charging adapter. And let's go ahead and take a look at this thing. Now, this costs right around $150, but it is well worth it if you plan on charging your non-Tesla at these Tesla chargers. And here's how it works. So on one end of the Electron charging adapter is the receiver end for the Tesla port. So plug that in. And then on the other end is the J1772 port, which should plug in nicely into the receptacle on the Nissan Leaf. Let's see if that worked. We are charging. It's 1130 right now. The car will be fully charged by 150 PM. So we are successfully charging our Nissan Leaf using a Tesla charger. So pretty cool stuff, but just to make sure that was not a fluke, let's go ahead and try another electric car. In this case, the Hyundai Kona EV. I wonder if the Tesla adapter will charge this one too. So the Hyundai Kona has the same issue as the Nissan Leaf. If you try to plug in the Tesla plug into the car, you've got compatibility issues, but let's try the Electron adapter. First, plug in the Tesla port into the Tesla side, and now the J1772 port into the car. And if I can line it up like that, let's see what the car says. All right, check it out. So in the Kona, you can see we are charging at 7.1 kilowatts. We are successfully accepting electricity into the battery pack. It says two hours from 83% to full at this state of charge. Very cool stuff. So we proved it on two cars. You can in fact charge using a Tesla charger, but we should probably explain there is more to the story. Now this is what they call a level two charger. These are installed by businesses such as Avery Brewing here as a nice thing for their customers. You might see them at hotels and the like, but it's important to note that these are not the Tesla superchargers you've probably read about in the news or on forums or on YouTube. Now the Tesla superchargers, those are the big chargers that kind of look like rectangles and those will charge an electric car Tesla from dead to 80% in somewhere around half an hour, give or take. They can go up to like 200, 250 kilowatts in a lot of cases. This is called a level two charger, a destination charger. Now these will take a few hours to fully charge an electric car. So can you use a supercharger using this little adapter? Unfortunately, no. Now these Tesla level two chargers run on something called AC or alternating current. You've probably heard of it. They operate at somewhere around 240 volts, give or take. Now, if you wanna use one of those really, really fast chargers, you have to charge on what they call DC or direct current. And this is where things get interesting because Tesla uses the same plug for both AC and DC current. However, other electric cars don't. So for example, this Nissan Leaf, you've got your J1772 port for AC, but then you've got this big scary thing that looks like it's gonna eat your family for DC. This is called a Chatamo. And obviously that's, that's not gonna work, is it? So you can't use this method to charge the Leaf on DC, but what about the Kona? Well, similar issue with the Kona. You see the Kona uses something called the CCS port. Let me go ahead and unlock it. And the CCS port is essentially an extension on top of uh, the standard port we've been using. You can see these two big giant prongs, and obviously this connector does not have those two big giant prongs. Now, once again, the CCS port is DC or direct current, but there are more issues than that. You see, even though we call these boxes chargers, these really aren't chargers whatsoever. 
For example, this Tesla destination charger, the charger you might have in your garage at home, plugged into the wall or installed in the wall, all they're doing is delivering electricity to the car. The actual charging actually happens on board the vehicle, at least when you're talking AC. So what this is doing is taking power from the grid and just dumping it into the Nissan. And then the Nissan says, oh, I can accept this much. And then the Nissan actually converts that into electricity that the battery can store. So these aren't really charging anything. This is just a way to get electricity from the grid into the car. And then it's the car that's doing all the work. So for example, in some of the really older electric cars, the chargers on board will fail and then you can't use these whatsoever. Now, when you're going with DC, something different entirely happens. You see, when you're talking DC charging, those really fast charging speeds, you're basically foregoing the onboard charger whatsoever and you're taking super high current electricity and jamming it directly into the battery pack. Now, there has to be a handshake that happens between the car and the charger that says, I'm the car, I can accept 50 kilowatts. And then the charger says, I'm a charger, I can output 350 kilowatts, but because you can only accept 50, have 50. It's a much more technically challenging charging process in terms of the communication between the car and the hard mounted box itself. And this communication happens via the Chatamo port on a Nissan, it happens via the CCS port on the Hyundai, and via the Tesla port on a Tesla. And currently, Tesla does not allow non-Teslas to charge at superchargers. Uh, there's no handshake that happens, although apparently they're gonna start opening it up here soon for other manufacturers to access that network. Um, and then of course you've got the question of billing. So for example, this destination charger is free if you're a patron here at Avery's Brewing. However, at a Tesla supercharger, for the most part, you're getting billed via your Tesla account. So within that handshake, you gotta have the billing contact information that goes between the car, and then you have to keep record of how many kilowatt hours go into the battery, and there's a whole complex equation that I'm not even gonna go into. So, is the Electron charging adapter worth it? Absolutely, here's why. Now you can see that Avery Brewing was very kind and actually installed both non-Tesla and Tesla style plugs, and that is very, very cool, but what you'll find is if you're on a road trip, you'll oftentimes come across hotels where they only have one or the other. For example, I was just on a road trip and the only plug available at the hotel we stayed at was a Tesla plug and I didn't have this adapter, which means I couldn't leave that hotel the next morning with a full charge, which is an absolute bummer. Now, if I did have this plug, I could plug it in and get a full charge overnight and be good to go using a Tesla destination charger. So this could be a lifesaver on a road trip. Even though it can't do the insane charging speeds that a supercharger offers, it's a really big deal if you plan on road tripping a car or if you plan on going to cool places like restaurants and trendy locations that have Tesla destinations, this can really get you out of a bind. And for $150, it's definitely worth it. Wow, okay, what a racket back there. I just can't wait till those guys using leaf blowers go all electric, but for real, this thing can be a lifesaver. Definitely check it out if you have a non-Tesla vehicle and you might need to charge at a Tesla level two station. And as always, this has been Tommy with the Fastlane Car. Check out tflcar.com for the latest and greatest in new car reviews.